Did you know that in Christ you have an indestructible life? That's fantastic news all the time, but it's especially encouraging when life gets hard or feels uncertain. Don't give up. Satan can't have you, the world can't overcome you, and the challenges you face can't stop you. In Christ, you're indestructible. Hello, my friends. I am so glad to be back with you in this new year. I am just pleased that I can have a podcast episode available for you in the month of January in this new year of 2024. I have had a lot going on and I still do, but God has made a way for me to record this message today. And I particularly have had on my heart the story of Joseph, because in this new year, the Holy Spirit led me to take up a reading plan where I'm reading through the Bible in a year, and I am enjoying it so very much. And part of the reading has included the book of Genesis. That makes sense, doesn't it, to start at the beginning. And so I have finished the book of Genesis. And while there's so much in this book that we could study, I uh, particularly have taken notice of Joseph's story. And I've been thinking about his life and what he experienced and how he found himself in a place he likely would not have chosen. He was put in a place of suffering. But in the end, if you know Joseph's story, then you know God used this time of suffering and this place Joseph did not choose. God used it for his purposes and he used it to save the people of God. And I want us to look closely and see what we can learn from Joseph's life that we can apply to our lives today. And I don't want to rush through it because there are so many details. There are so many treasures in God's word. So I'm going to start us in Genesis chapter 37. And if you will just bear with me, I am going to start reading and periodically I will stop and share some thoughts as the Holy Spirit leads. And for the sake of adventure, let's just see how far we get in Genesis 37 today because I am already on board with the idea of just taking this look at Joseph's story over a uh, period of several episodes. So let's go ahead and get started and I will start reading Genesis 37 verse 1. If you want to open your Bible and read along with me, I'm actually reading in the King James Version today. So I invite you to do that. Or if you just want to listen, that is perfectly fine as well. And Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger, in the land of Canaan. These are the generations of Jacob. Joseph, being seventeen years old, was feeding the flock with his brethren. And the lad was with the sons of Bilhah and with the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives. And Joseph brought unto his father their evil report." So let me just stop here and comment. Let's notice this detail of Joseph being 17 years old. I can remember when I was 17 years old, and man, it was a long time ago. And I I think back to that age, and I feel like I was just a baby. (laughs) And yet, here's Joseph. And Scripture tells us he went back and he gave his father an evil report. I'm sure if these brothers found out Joseph had said negative things about them to their father, 
that that would have made them pretty upset. We don't know whether that was the case, but we do know that Joseph gave a bad report about these brothers to his father. Okay, let's continue. Now, Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age and he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. So we learn some more information here that Joseph was the favorite of his father. And this created difficulty, extreme difficulty between Joseph and his brothers because the Bible says these brothers hated Joseph. They knew their father loved him most. They saw the coat of many colors Jacob made for Joseph and gave him to wear. So just as a practical application for us, for those of us who are moms, for those of us who are parents, this story right here is an excellent example of why it is so terrible to have a favorite child. I know that Joseph was the son of Rachel, whom uh, Jacob dearly loved. But listen, this favoritism, it created such problems. And I want to just also mention the fact that Joseph didn't have anything to do with that. He didn't choose that. He didn't uh, try to attain that position. But it was something Jacob did He had this favoritism in his heart. And actually, if you look back in history at Jacob's family, we see that same favoritism in his nuclear family where his father, Isaac, uh, held on to Esau as his favorite. And their mother, Rebecca, was uh, really kind of inclined more toward Jacob. And so this was a thread, this favoritism. It kind of ran in the family. It created such problems. And so I encourage you and all of us with children, let's be very careful to maintain the same love for each of the precious children God gives to us. They are special in their own right. And they are individuals. They are created in God's image. And he has a special purpose and a special touch on each child we have. So let's not be partial to one or the other. All right, I'm going to continue reading. And Joseph dreamed a dream. And he told it his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. And he said unto them, Hear, I pray you, this dream which I have dreamed. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheaf arose, and also stood upright. And behold, your sheaves stood round about, and made obeisance to my sheaf. And his brethren said to him, Shall thou indeed reign over us? Or shalt thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. And he dreamed yet another dream and told it his brethren and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obeisance to me. And he told it to his father and to his brethren. And his father rebuked him and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee to the earth? And his brethren envied him, but his father observed the saying. So here we see Joseph had two different dreams. And in both of the dreams, it was a picture of his brothers coming to a place and even his father coming to a place of bowing down before him. And the brothers did not take kindly to this dream. In fact, they hated him even more. 
And they they spoke to him and they were like, are we really going to bow down before you? And then his father also did not respond the best way to Joseph's dream. It says he rebuked him and he seemed incredulous at the thought of all of them bowing down before Joseph. Now, I wanted to mention here, I've heard it suggested before that It really wasn't a great idea for Joseph to share these dreams with his brothers because maybe he was being kind of um, like maybe he was kind of bragging about it and just kind of putting it in their face and and saying, you know, look, there's coming a day when you're going to bow down before me and and things of that nature. Well, I just want to stick to scripture here and scripture does not give us that impression of Joseph. It just tells us the facts that he had these two dreams and he shared the dreams with his brothers and, and the second dream he also shared with his father. It it, it really, scripture does not delve into the motivations in Joseph's heart. It, It doesn't tell us what he was thinking or what he was trying to accomplish. And, and honestly, it could have just been a young man who who loved his brothers and just wanted to communicate with them and share with them. Hey, listen, I had these really cool dreams, you know, and, and maybe he just kind of wanted to bounce them off of his brothers and and see what they thought. I don't think we really can draw a strong conclusion about Joseph's motivations because we just don't know. So let's stick to what we do know. The brothers hated him all the more after he shared these dreams. And then also after he shared the second dream, the Bible says that these brothers envied him. And listen, I think that was a huge part of their hatred for Joseph. They, I believe, were very jealous of him. He had that favorite position with their father and they were jealous And they hated him. And earlier in these verses of what I have read, uh, we're also told that they could not speak peaceably to Joseph. And so I get the picture that these brothers were just bitter with jealousy, with hatred. And they couldn't even speak in a kind way to this brother. And all of this comes together to the first place where I believe Joseph found himself. This first place he didn't choose. You know, I think it's easy to read the whole story of Joseph and, of course, find the obvious. But this place is his position in a family with siblings who hated him. I don't think anybody would choose that. I don't think Joseph desired that. And yet here he was in this place. And furthermore, I don't think he chose the place of being the favorite son. And yet he was in that place. And so what does all of this mean? What does it mean in our lives? We can look at this from a very... um, equal comparison and look at our families because each of us are born to two parents and have some sort of family situation. It can be a good situation or a bad situation. It can be a situation where we are taken away from our our birth parents or our birth family. You know, it, it can be in a lot of different varieties. But the fact of the matter is, we are all children of someone. And, and most of us have some siblings in our lives. What kind of relationship do we have? I think oftentimes there can be factors in the family that exist before we even get into the family. (laughs) And And we don't choose those things. We don't choose our parents. We don't choose our families. In most cases, (laughs) the ones we're born into at any rate, that is God's doing, his sovereign placement of each of us. Like I said, 
Some are bad situations. Some are good. Some are in between. But what do we do with the situations we're placed in, with the family we find ourselves in? Let's learn from Joseph's example. When we read this beginning of his story, we don't read about him uh, having a bad spirit toward his brethren. He, he seemed to just keep interacting with them in a measure of uh, just agreeableness toward them. And he doesn't seem to argue with God about his position in his life. He just seems to accept matters and to just go on with his life the best he can. And so I want to encourage each of us with that principle right here. Wherever you are, whatever is going on in your family, whether it's with siblings or parents or perhaps with a spouse or your children or maybe it's extended family, let's recognize God is in control and he never places us in a situation outside of his purpose. And so let's trust him and let's just move forward in the way the Holy Spirit leads us. Let's live according to God's word. Let's not argue with where God has placed us. Let's just do the best we can by the power of the Holy Spirit. And Let's see what God has in mind down the road. We have to remember the story's not over until it's over. And a lot of times when we're in the middle of our story, it can be so hard because we don't understand what's going on. We don't see what God's purpose is, but he does and he will see it through. All right, let's keep reading. Verse 12. And his brethren went to feed their father's flock in Shechem. And Israel said unto Joseph, Do not thy brethren feed the flock in Shechem? Come, and I will send thee unto them. And he said to him, Here am I. And I just have to stop right here and say, Look at Joseph's attitude in this portion. He knew His brothers hated him. He knew they could not speak peaceably to him. I'm sure he could feel the tension. And yet his father said, I'm going to send you to your brethren. And Joseph's response was an obedient response. He said, here am I. Verse 14. And he said to him, go, I pray thee, see whether it be well with thy brethren and well with the flocks and bring me word again. So he sent him out of the vale of Hebron, and he came to Shechem. You know, a thought just occurred to me as I read this, where uh, Jacob instructed Joseph to give him word again. And so earlier in this chapter, when we're told that Joseph brought an evil report of his brethren to his father, I'm thinking now that his father, Jacob, requested this report. Joseph wasn't just being a tattletale. He was being obedient to his father. That's what I gather from this scripture because uh, here in verse 14, Jacob is asking for another report, which really falls in line with him asking for a report in those early verses. And so Joseph is being obedient. Picking up again at verse 15. And a certain man found him, and behold, he was wandering in the field. And the man asked him, saying, What seekest thou? And he said, I seek my brethren. Tell me, I pray thee, where they feed their flocks. And the man said, They are departed hence, for I heard them say, Let us go to Dothan. And Joseph went after his brethren and found them in Dothan. And when they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. And they said one to another, Behold, this dreamer cometh. Come now, therefore, and let us slay him, and cast him into some pit. And we will say, Some evil beast hath devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. And Reuben heard it, and he delivered him out of their hands, and said, Let us not kill him. 
And Reuben said unto them, Shed no blood, but cast him into this pit that is in the wilderness, and lay no hand upon him, that he might rid him out of their hands, to deliver him to his father again. And it came to pass, when Joseph was come unto his brethren, that they stripped Joseph out of his coat, his coat of many colors, that was on him. And they took him, and cast him into a pit, and the pit was empty, there was no water in it. And they sat down to eat bread. And they lifted up their eyes and looked, and behold, a company of Ishmaelites came from Gilead with their camels bearing spicery and balm and myrrh, going to carry it down to Egypt. And Judah said unto his brethren, What profit is it if we slay our brother and conceal his blood? Come, and let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother and our flesh, and his brethren were content. Wow. So a lot is happening here. We, we read that Joseph finds his brothers in Dothan, and, and while he was in the distance, they saw him coming, and at that point, they conspired to harm him. They wanted to kill him and, and make up a story about him. The evil in their hearts is so apparent in this passage. And it's really heartbreaking to read of these brothers conspiring against their brother. They call him the dreamer. It's like his story to them or, or his communication to them about his dreams just kind of just kind of really got under their skin. They just couldn't stand it. They were just eaten up with this envy, with this hatred. And they, they just wanted to be rid of him. They did not want Joseph in their lives. And so they come up with this plan to get rid of him. And yet, The oldest brother, Reuben, says, let's not kill him. Let's just put him in this pit because he was intending to come along later and rescue Joseph out of the pit. And so they put Joseph into this pit. They stripped him of his coat of many colors and they just put him down into this deep, dark pit where there was no water and evidently no water way of escape. And here we see the second place Joseph found himself in, the place that he did not choose, in the bottom of this pit. It was dark. It was probably damp and cold and just deathly quiet. He doesn't know the end of his story. He doesn't know what's going to happen. All he knows is that his brothers have taken away this coat of many colors his father lovingly made for him and put upon him. They have stolen that off of his back and they have put him in the bottom of this pit. And then the Bible tells us that they went on to eat. In these verses we have read, Joseph has gone from a place in a family where his father looks at him as his favorite, but his brothers hate him. That has led him to a place where his brothers have stripped him and put him in the bottom of a pit. You know, when I read the story of Joseph, it's beautiful because I can see the beginning all the way to the end. And I I see what God did and I see how God used Joseph. But for Joseph, he lived this, and he didn't know what was around the corner. So he was in some very dark places. And scripture does not tell us, again, what was in his heart. And yet as his story progresses, we see that Joseph remained true to God. And so I believe even in these dark places in chapter 37, that Joseph was remaining true to God. He was staying true to the faith of his fathers. And 
he quietly took this abuse. He didn't resist from what we read. He didn't fight back. He quietly received the unkind speech. He just went into the bottom of this pit. Friend, what kind of place are you in today? Are you in a place you would not have chosen for yourself? I dare say many of us find ourselves in that kind of place here and there throughout life. And so I'm going to leave us with a couple of encouragements. First of all, remember Joseph. He lived this out in his life and he remained true to the faith. So let's let's do the same in our lives. Even though it's dark, even though it might be deathly quiet, even though we don't feel like there are people around us who understand, God sees us, God hears us, and God understands, and God is with us. Second of all, I just want to to encourage each of us to not only remember Joseph, but to remember God has a purpose. Just as he had a purpose for Joseph, he has a purpose for you and for me. And he will not waste our time in these places we don't choose. He's molding us. He's shaping us. He's training us for his purposes. So let's not waste the time we have. Sure, it doesn't feel good. Sure, we wouldn't choose this place or that place. But let's, uh, let's submit to our Heavenly Father, to His wisdom, to His sovereignty, to His will. And let's trust Him that He knows what's best. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode of Indestructible Life. If you have been blessed by this message, I hope you will share it with a friend and make sure you come back next time for another look into the life of Joseph. Remember, God loves you. In Christ, you're indestructible.